So external beam radiation uh, is for everybody. Uh, you know, there are, there are there are different ways to develop to, to give radiation. Uh, external beam radiation therapy is particularly uh, used in men with very high-grade prostate cancers, those that have risks of high risk of facts. Uh, of the disease spreading to the lymph glands in the pelvis, so it's something that we have to do through, an ex through external beam radiation, as well as those men, those men that are n either not willing to undergo brachytherapy, which is internal radiation therapy, or can't because their prostate is too big, there's other reasons that make them ineligible for that type of radiation. So for those men that decide that they want to have radiation therapy and are good candidates for external beam radiation, they'll usually come in uh, have a, a special CAT scan done so that we can do mapping of the bladder, the rectum, those organs that we're worried about that are near the prostate as well as map out the prostate. Uh, men will get some small tattoos put on their skin so they can be lined up with lasers every day to help us with precision. Uh, it takes us about a week or two to get the radiation plan ready because every radiation plan is specific for the individual patient's anatomy so it's not kind of a one mold fits all, it's really individualized based on the person's anatomy because everyone looks different on the inside. Uh, and then once patients do come, every day they have a mini CAT scan uh, before each radiation to make sure that their prostate's in the exact same spot and it's more than a millimeter or two away from where it was when we planned the radiation, the bed moves them. And then the radiation beam is typically in the modern era on for about a minute or two minutes, but they're on, they'll be on the bed there for about 15 or 20 minutes. It's in an open air area, it's not that it's in a tube, there's no tunnels, it's essentially just a big x-ray arm. It's a bit fancier than an x-ray arm with a fancier bed, but it, it more or less is the same. And then there's different regimens we use with radiation, so the standard if men are having their prostate treated is a, a daily dose Monday to Friday for eight weeks, so 39 treatments in full. In, in full. Some of our centers have more specialized ways of treating, so for example at Sunnybrook we do lots of research and we are now going to start to enroll allowing men with, very, with lower grade disease to be treated in only five shots of radiation. Again, a lot of these are on research protocols to make sure they're as effective and as safe. Uh, but essentially, men come in, they lay on the bed, the machine is on for a couple of minutes, they get up and they leave. They usually see the physician once a week to make sure the bowels are good, the bladder's good. Um, and, and, it, and other than coming in every day, which is very tiresome, uh, most men do very well. So with external radiation, the two main issues with side effects are that the bladder, the prostate sits here, the bladder's right in front of it, the, the rectum is right behind it. So there's a small rim of those tissues that get a high dose of radiation. So in regards to the bladder, men will pee more often. It takes several weeks, but they start to pee a little more often during the radiation. They may slow the water down. About one in 10 will need a medication to make the water flow better, just because the prostate gets a little bit swollen, so guys don't empty their bladder very well. It's rare, but probably 1% or less of the time, men, they, they, if their prostate is really big, they can obstruct and need to have a catheter put in. And actually, that's actually quite rare, but it does happen. In regards to the rectum, men will have an extra bowel movement or two uh, a day. Uh, so they do change the bowels with it. Some guys say they get a bit gassy during treatment. Again, nothing really changes quality of life, but it does change them, uh, their bowels. Uh, the main risk, though, uh, is that someone will get a bit of discomfort down there, so they get a feeling that they have to, to have a, a, a bowel movement, but they end up not doing that, and they need to have some a topical uh, steroid or something to relieve that, just to relieve the, the pressure. And someone can get a bit of diarrhea. So it can happen intermittently, they're great for two days, and then one day they really go in the bathroom every half hour, hour, and usually just a little bit of Imodium or some type of medication to slow the bowels does. Uh, someone can get a bit of aggravation of hemorrhoids, uh, so it might need something to help just relieve them during the treatment. And most people get tired. Radiation makes people tired with prostate because there's a little bit of bone marrow on our hips and it gets suppressed a bit so the red blood cells go down so guys get a bit anemic and a bit tired. But coming into the cancer center every day Monday to Friday for weeks is, is emotionally tiring regardless how strong people they are. You know, it's a long time, stress makes humans tired and, and a lot of guys by the end are quite happy it's over. I think like any treatment, I don't think radiation is, is unique in that. For every treatment, the very rare side effects are the ones that people think are going to happen. So for example, radiation, the main issue is there's a small chance decades after radiation that people will develop a cancer because of the radiation, which is a real risk. It's small, but it's real. But I think one of the biggest misconceptions people get is that if I have radiation, I'm going to get cancer from it. And I think that's just something that uh, people need to be aware of. Of it's possible, but in fact, it's a very rare side effect that happens decades later. So I think it's more reassuring people that, that there are small risks, but they are small uh, and they're not definitely going to happen.